Okay, I have a question for you up front. So who saw the room talk before? Okay, yeah, that's a photo of her because when I uh, pitched my uh, talk, I, I wasn't aware that room also has its own talk. So I, I tried to shorten it a bit, but cover really the most important or uh, interesting aspects of room. All right, let's get started. So when you look at uh, the mobile world, it's, it's mostly uh, SQL, but SQL came uh, initially like from the server. It has its history from Oracle and, and IBM, like the real big companies. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Okay. And also SQLite, the database you, you have on Android and iOS, it is around since 2000. And it's, it's the most, most uh, use database, like each on, on, on your desktop computer, it is running at least with like 20 instances, whatever. So it's very, very popular. And of course, you, you still have SQL rows and columns. And this, this doesn't always nicely fit with the object world, right? So that's, that's why there are ORMs, object relational mappers. Also those, those come from the server space. So uh, personally, I I was doing a lot of uh, Java Enterprise stuff before doing Android, and and like things like Hibernate, always like uh, I thought it's so cool to have that, not to work with with SQL anymore. So how how does a ORM work? So basically, it's like the mediator, like the bridge uh, between both worlds, right? And it gives you a higher level of abstraction, so you can work with objects. And uh, you, you don't. You have to do less SQL. So it also helps you with queries and so on. Right. So this is, this is where we come from. And now this year at I/O, Room was introduced from Google. And the most three important classes you have to know uh, in, in Room are both. So there's a database. That's how you. That's like your initial access, kind of. You have to, uh, you, you get a builder, and you can also do migrations and get DAOs. Like, we come to DAOs in a second. So, and then there's entities. Entities are the objects that you can persist and, and load. And the good old DAOs. Um, so, so these are like the data access objects. So, uh, how you interact with, with the concrete uh, type of of uh, class. And a very interesting aspect of Room is it's, it's basically bring your in, uh, own API. That means like the API is not that fixed. So for example, if you look at a database class, you will provide an abstract class and, and Room will extend it and implement like the abstract methods. This looks like this. And, and also for DAOs, it's similar. You provide some interfaces. So who's, who's using Retrofit? Maybe hands up. Yeah. You know this approach. It also works with uh, Room. So how does this look in code? So this is how you initialize your database. In, uh, in, in here, you can provide your own methods to get a DAO, so you can play around with the DAO later. And to, to initialize that, uh, like that my room DB, you go through room .database builder and provide an Android context and like the class here and, and a name for your database file. And also, you can add migrations. And then you build it, and then you have your uh, database. So remember, those database classes give you access to individual DAOs. And DAOs are interfaces again. You just use a tiny annotation DAO. And then also, for uh, if you want to insert an object or, or retrieve, uh, or Updated, deleted, there are annotations for this. And in the end, it looks like this. 
So this will, so this is what you write, and Room will give you the implementation. So, how about queries? So this is where Room uh, really, yeah, really embraces SQL. It, it, is, it doesn't want to hide SQL from you. It it's rather encourages you to, to use SQL. And that, that's how you work. So you also, like, if, you, if I may go back one slide, where's this DAO? And in this DAO, you can also have, like, query methods. So you do another annotation query. And in a simple way, like, just to get all users, you would select star from users, easy. And uh, also, Room is intel intelligent, kind of, to map those um, parameters that you have in your method with the SQL you, you give here. So this is really, uh, a really nice way of doing things. However, Room does not support relations. That's not a coincidence. There's, there's a whole paragraph on the Room documentation page uh, for arguments not doing it. So it's a, kind of similar to SQL Delight. They also say, ah, we don't want to be even an ORM. We think like the whole relation thing, like re relational and object is just broken, so we don't touch it. And a similar way is, is for Room. So one of the problems with relations is that you, when you get an object and that has like relations, it's usually, usually lazy loaded relations. That means uh, when you get your query result back and you, you hit like uh, get address whatever from, from a user object, so at that point in time, the user may, uh, may, may have some delays because there will be a data query being made. And if you scroll in a list, so with, for, for, for each display item, you may have a new query running in the background. So, so this is the problematic field. And room, uh, room ways of doing it is have like objects, like classes that are really tailored to your uh, UI. What, what are maybe the five fields that you display? Just select those. So it will be like a SQL select with, with joins just to get all the data you need for, for what you want to display. OK, I think that's it uh, for Room. If there are questions about Room, we can, uh, I guess we should do it at the end, or do you want to go ahead? That's fine, huh? All right. But still, it's uh, SQL. So you really have to know SQL kind of. So on Sunday, we had a bar camp discussion. And I, I just want to have two quotes, not, not from me. <laughs> so SQL is really easy to get started, but hard to master. And, and this in combination with this quote. So when you, when you use an ORM, you, you cannot uh, shy away from SQL, because it's sometime unless you're doing a really simple app, it will, it will hit you. So we, we said two quotes from uh, that discussion, and I kind of liked it, because it, yeah, that's, that's what you have to do. Either you embrace SQL and really learn it, or try something else. Which brings us to object box. <laughs> okay, so what is object box? So it's really, so I did Green DAO before, back in uh, 2011, and I always wanted it to be like the fastest ORM, and uh, so I kept optimizing, but, but at, some time, at some point in time, I just realized I, I could only go this far, because then all like, performance is wasted in uh, system APIs and SQLite. So, some years later, I, thought, okay, so we really have to get rid of SQLite and just make everything in a way that works nicely with objects. Yeah. And 
it really, yeah. So one thing that is really important, I think, for, for object databases is to figure out relations. So in Green DAO, it was always like, ah, oh, yeah, we could do it this way, but it didn't really never work. And it's, it's a common problem with ORMs, like lazy loading and so on. It's always a pain. So in object box, it's very efficient to resolve relations. And also, it supports lazy and eager uh, loading. Yeah, and, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a performance guy. I always want to have my libraries very, very fast. So it's very optimized for performance. And there's an open source uh, app just to check out the performance. So you, you can have a look at the code. So again, so when, when I built object box, it was 100% clear that I should do as less Java as possible. Because Java on Android is still very slow. On like the desktop, it is, it is sometimes really uh, as fast as C++, but on Android, not yet. But that may never be the case. So one goal is to do as much as possible in C++. And also, like keep it really simple because it, but actually it's like the same thing. If you do it really simple, it will be always so fast. So kind of same argument. Right, let's look at the uh, API a bit. So where's this concept of a box? And you just put objects in, in, in a box. So it's very easy, right? And for, for each type, there's a different box. So you get a box object for, for example, like an address or a person, and, and that's the way it works. And there's also like a box store where you get a box from. So you just say literally like store box for and this class, and you have it. So that's how you like insert uh, a new note. So it looks for for yeah for realm uh, or or ams. It pretty much looks all the same to API, right? You have you have an object and you do something with it. So yeah, and there's also some other uh, methods, obviously like get all. So object box like most ORAMs and, and Realm come with a fixed API. So there, there's, you don't need to have an, uh, define an interface for that, right? You just say get all and you get all nodes. And yeah, so we, we try to make things simple. So if you have like two nodes, you can just uh, comma separate them or, or just pass a list. Same for put, where's count, and of course, there are queries. So queries are done with a Query Builder. And you, you can have several conditions, like for example, equal or starts with. And once you have a query, you can run it. You can say, I just want the first, or I want all. OK, let's check out entities. So an entity is actually like a plain old Java object. So when, once you have the object, it has all its uh, properties filled. There are no threading constraints whatsoever. And yeah, so this, this kind of simplifies some things. So you have seen before like this is put command. And on the other uh, hand, there's, there's like, if you think SQL, there are a lot of different ways to insert, update, insert, or in, uh, update, or insert. There are lots of different ways how, how to do this in object box, there's just put. And it, it is like the semantics, what it does, if there's an ID uh, zero, then it's a new object. And if it already has an ID, it's going to be an update. And, and for example, you can like put a list and it doesn't even matter if it's new objects or old objects. You can just put it in a list and, and store it as it is. So this is like a relation example. So this is like a one-to-many relation. 
And um, so for the to one side, you need to have a little proxy class here. But that's all you have to write. You, do, you don't even have to uh, equals new or whatever. You do not in initiate this. So this, this is done by object box. Um, so how this works, it, it is like, like your class will be modified at build time a bit. But you will notice. And like one order uh, belongs to a customer, right? But a customer can have a lot of orders. So this is the backlink. That's, that's why you put a backlink. And it, um, because there's just a single link in this direction, it knows, OK, it must be this guy. So this, this ensures it's the same data. So this is a real uh, one-to-many relation. And yeah, so you can use just list of an entity, and this, this will make up your relation. So how does it look like if you want to in, like, like insert a new entity? So we have a playlist, and we add two songs to it. This is, this is the Java code. Just to initiate the Java side of things, and to, to persist all this, you need this. So this, this persists, the single put will persist your playlist and the two songs that are attached to it. So yeah, if you, if you want to do this in SQLite or, or even in Room, I think that's going to be like, I don't know, this one. Queries again. So where's, who knows JPA by the way? OK. <laughs> So in JPA, there is a the concept of meta classes. For each entity, you will have some meta information stored in a class with underscore. And the same is true for object box. So for each entity you have, you can, you can have a safe way to access uh, properties and relation. So you, you will see in the query example right now. Yeah, I think I talked about the query builder. And yeah, OK. And queries also have aggregates, so you, you can have like a, like what is the highest uh, uh, volume or whatever. So here again, more complicated uh, example for a query. So it always starts with the box. The box is really the central part you you're, you have to work with, and you say query, and and here are those. Uh, meta information classes, right? So there's no way you can have a typo, so this, this is com uh, checked at compile time. Um, OK. I'm just wondering. Right, there's, there's another nice thing about object box that relates to testing. So usually when you test your database, you have to make an uh, instrument instrumentation test on Android. So you have to deploy your app on device and, and run the test here. And this is, this is very slow. Whereas, uh, at least for SQLite, you can do this with RoboElectric. But it's still like, until, until RoboElectric boots up, that's, that's kind of slow. And with uh, object box, it allows you to run real Java unit tests because object box also runs on a desktop. So this is really, really fast. I think I might, I can show this maybe, wait a sec. Ah, okay, if Windows lets me. No, apparently not. No, okay, sorry. So um, we, we use the same for unit tests, for unit testing object box, and, and it runs like, I don't know, like 100 uh, unit tests in, in like two seconds or something. All right, so when you deploy your app, uh, it probably won't be the last version you probably will ha uh, have new entities and new properties. So that is like my, my, so this is going into the di direction of migrations. 
And object box has a yeah, like, like a meta model of all entities and properties to track IDs. This will so with in this way it will uh, like if you have several devices, it can address always the same uh, entities and properties internally. This is some information you might need uh, later on, because if you add a property, it just works. You just uh, add it to your class, and you don't have to do any migration or migration, migration scripts. Same for removing. If you rename something, then you would have to have this uh, UID annotation that we have, and this will reference one of those uh, IDs I was, sorry, I was um, talking before. So once you put this UID to this entity or property, you can rename it any way you want, you can refactor it, it object box will, will always keep track of that. So that's a totally different uh, approach to migration, and we really want to make this very simple. I, I think at this point, it, it, we are not quite there yet, but uh, yeah, I, I think we're on a good way. Let us know. Anybody use Green DAO? Hands up. Okay. So there is also like a little compatibility layer for uh, Green DAO. That is like a Green DAO API on top of Object Box, and it emulates the Green DAO API, and it helps if you have an app with, with Green DAO to switch to Object Box. Yeah, or you could also use it in combination for. Yeah, but I've, okay, forget about this option. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, Object Box was released uh, yesterday with, in, in, in version 1.0. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> and, yeah, it's, we are still at the very beginning and just would love your feedback. So I hope you, you have some time trying it out, giving it a shot, and... Writing, writing us emails, how you like it, or what you don't like about it. Really want to make this good. Okay, so. How many of you like SQL? Hands up. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay. Um, not so many. So, it's, it's a kind of scale on how, how much you, you want to be on the SQL side or on the object side. And, for example, if you do SQLite Android APIs, you have a little abstraction already, kind of, but you're still very much in, into SQL, right? The next closest thing would be something like SQL Delight, where you still have your, um, you, you basically write create table statements that gets translated into Java classes. And when you have room, where you, where you have Java uh, classes, but, but you have all your queries in SQL. And like typical ORMs would, would, yeah, they would try to hide most of SQL away. And yeah, on the other spectrum, there's, there's like object box and realm, and yeah. So it's, that's, that's kind of the choice you have to make. So how much SQL do you want in your app? Kind of. Okay. Oh yeah, we also have some benchmarking. Um, actually, we, we have an open source project. So, so on GitHub, just uh, GitHub slash object box, and then you see a couple of repositories. And one of them is like just for benchmarking. So, so please check our code. Don't trust any benchmark code uh, that you don't have access to. So we really encourage you to look at it. And yeah, so, so these are our results. And because we are we totally dropping this, this rows and columns approach, it's more like a key object database kind of. And, and key value databases, like if you know SQL and NoSQL in, in 
Java world, uh, sorry, in, in enterprise world, it's like the fastest databases you can get. So with this new SQL approach, bringing this to mobile is just giving you so much more performance. Okay, also for uh, queries, it is very fast. You can do a lot of more queries, and especially like, like this one is very important because this is how you resolve relations. And if you can do a lot of them, that's, that's pretty good. So maybe it doesn't even matter if you, if you have like lazy loaded relations because object box does this just so much more efficiently. Oh, by the way, I totally missed. There are also eager loaded um, relations. So for each query, you can just say eager and list your relations that you want to have preloaded, like in a background thread. And, and this way, you can have like the entire object graph that you need in your UI thread without doing any, anything that has to do with the database. So this is uh, all cached. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I think there's a microphone. <laughs> yes. Hi there, it looks uh, very promising to me. Is there any um, chance for any iOS counterpart for this one? <laughs> um, iOS, that's, that's something in, in the queue. We, we cannot sell any uh, time frames for that. Uh -huh. So not yet for... for yeah, so, mm -hmm. so we are like Android first, and yeah, let's see. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't really answer the question from the bar camp, I think. So, what was will the question? SQL hit me if I don't care about SQL? <laughs> Again, will hit, SQL well, hit me? No, it's the story. Yeah, the, just how much do I need? Do I need to still care about my data? How much do I? Well, it will not be SQL because you're no SQL. But how yeah. much do I still need to think about my data? I would say think about your objects and your classes and you're pretty much done. As simple as that. <laughs> um, just a little question. Uh, if I have a relationship like that customer and order that you showed on your mm -hmm. slides and I navigate in my Java code from the customer to his orders and back and forth and back and forth, mm -hmm. do I get identical objects every time or? Mm -hmm. New instances, but equal. Uh, in that case, you get new in, uh, new instances all the time. Okay, so, thanks. So that's a little different uh, from Green DAO. We, there was like this uh, ID session thing, whatever. Uh, but but here you always get like fresh objects out of the database. I wonder the the better performance you achieve <laughs> is it. Um, because you somehow optimize I.O. operations, or is it because you do some clever caching and do operations asynchronously? And another question is, I think I'm not, definitely not an expert in, in this area, but I imagine that the performance of such systems is very much media and file system dependent. So I also imagine that for SQLite, uh, some optimizations has to be made by the vendors. Do you also take something of this kind into considerations, like not creating big files and reading, you know, chunks and some kind of of, of this type of optimizations? Because you are dealing with flash memory in the end, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is absolutely no caching. It is to really. Um, like the objective was really to, to make it all to the minimum. So uh, in, in the end, it comes down to, to like memory mapped files and how you store objects in, in those, like really in a binary format. And so, yeah, so, so the main bottleneck is actually Java and JNI. There's also a C++ API for object box. It's not, um, 
available at this time, but we, we, we have that, and it's like, if, if you think that is fast, the C++ one is really fast. But you store the data persistently. Yeah, I'm, sure. And you don't use SQLite to do that. No. So you have your own yes. proprietary implementation, which is yeah, open yeah. source. Um, <laughs> I'll ask you a question. So, like the Java part that you interact with, that is open source, then we have a closed core for, for uh, like, like the real database engine stuff, but it's always going to be free. And we are thinking about right now how we are going to approach this further in the, in the future. Um, Usually, Java developers don't care so much about C++ code, but yeah. And with I.O. In, in general, it's, yeah. Um, like, like this kind of secret is really memory map files because they're so blazingly fast and, and they, they do so much caching for you. It's, it's something uh, in your Linux kernel. Yeah, hope that, maybe we can have a talk one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. I Thank think. you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. In our app, we uh, need to sometimes refresh the data for our objects over the internet. Uh, so, uh, would that be possible with object box? So, uh, the freshly loaded uh, objects from the internet uh, don't have internal IDs from the from the object box database. How would you map those objects? to the persistent objects. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you would have like a secondary ID and you would, do, uh, would have to do some manual work. So object box, so one of the uh, early on design decisions was to go with long IDs, also for performance reasons. And at some point we will also uh, have uh, string IDs, but, but not in one at all. Okay, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, is there any form of uh, rollback system? Let's consider you have like a really huge list of like one million mm -hmm. objects and you want to insert them into your mm -hmm. database and then the app crashes like in mm -hmm. between. And mm -hmm. uh, is there like anything like a mm -hmm. transaction? Yeah, so there are transactions, it's actually asset Atomic, isolated, durable, whatever, consistent. <laughs> uh, so yeah, your your data is uh, should be pretty stable. So even if you, something, if your app goes, or if if like if you take out a battery in your phone, from your phone, you, you should have like a committed state still. So what's the default behavior when you're inserting, when it crashes halfway through? So. Will it mm -hmm. not save anything, or will it save just the half? And no, no, no. Yeah. It's, it's like really, um, for example, you say put list of users, OK? So what, what will happen, there's an implicit transaction for, for those users, for this list of users. So if your uh, app crashes in the middle, your won't, it looks like you didn't even start with it. So you really have a committed state. So this transaction, transaction about is, transactions are about all or nothing, and if it, they break in the middle, you have nothing of this transaction. Thank you. Thanks for your talk. Um, I have a question regarding the C++ API. So we just took our business logic and implemented it all in C++ and have it mm -hmm. shared across Android and iOS. We made it with SQLite, and we found out there's not much to have library-wise so far. Mm -hmm. So the question is, did you think about making, the C making it portable to iOS so that um, it can run both on Android and iOS and can be used mm -hmm. via C++ API? Because I think yeah. that's... So, so, so the thing is, the C++ stuff uh, is cross-platform. Also, our Java we, we, um, object box runs on a desktop, right? So that means in with Java, on, on the one hand, it runs on um, Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and, and uh, same is for the C++ API. But the CPA, 
C++ API that would be like you would have to contact us and work with us a little more one one. So okay. there's no public thing here. That sounds very very promising. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, more questions? All right. So thanks a lot.